going to let God have his way in me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe God has a reason and a purpose for everything that he does. So those that can't, please find 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. God just can't keep me off of that scripture. Because we've got an old generation and we've got a new generation. And I'm going to try to, this old generation up here going to try to pour something in to the new generation on today because I'm trying to help somebody. You don't know my story. You don't know the things that I've been through. But I can tell you a little something, something, because I know God can take anybody and make them somebody in him. Amen. As we stand, as we go before the Lord in prayer, Lord, we ask right now, Jesus, that you use this vessel the way you see fit. That you speak a word in this place on today. Lord, please let the words of my mouth, please let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elijah from Gilgad and Elijah and said unto Elisha tarry here I pray thee for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel and Elijah said unto him as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elijah and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from the head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest that thou that the Lord will take away thy master from you? The, thy head Day, and he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood too far off, and they two stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither so that they, they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of the fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Before you sit down, please look at the person next to you and tell them these few words. Get what you came for. You may be seated. Get what you came for. You've been coming to this council I don't know how long. But it's time for you to get what you came for. It's time to get out of that car.
comfort zone. It's time for you to stop being afraid. It's time for you to stop wondering what people thinking about you. It's time for you to get just what you came for. It's time out for playing church. You need to let the Lord use you. It might not make sense to somebody, but it's not about them. It's all about God. Elisha knew that he was leaving. But one thing Elisha made up in his mind, I'm not going to get distracted. I'm not going to lose focus. I'm going to stay with you, Elijah. Sometimes on this road, people might not understand the things that you do. They might not understand the praise that you have. They might not understand the joy that you feel for the Lord. But I'm here to encourage these young people, forget every time you come into the house of God. You better get what you came for. Don't you let nobody stop you from praising God. See, I lived in an unsaved home. My mother didn't want me to go to church, but I had a mind to serve the Lord. I had a mind to be in the house of God. So I went when, I, when she said, you don't need to go to church, church, church all the time. You make up in your mind, for God I live, and for God I die. Elisha made on this journey, he had to travel. To, he went in different places. He went from Gilgal. See, well, before he ever went there, he had to learn how to deny himself. A lot of times we don't want to deny ourselves. We want to do what we want to do because we think we're brave enough and we think we're grown enough to do the things that we want to do. But he burned he burned his plow, he burned, he made a sacrifice for his meat of the cattle. He did all these things. See, it's not nothing greater than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sometimes you gotta leave some things behind. Sometimes you gotta leave some people behind. Because you got to be about your father's business. And when Elijah, he said, I'm gonna do some things. See, it's always somebody standing on the wayside. Looking at you, thinking that why, why are you, you know, Elisha? He said the people was telling Elisha, you know that he's getting ready to be taken. You know he's getting ready to, God's coming back to get him. I don't know how much long I got, but while I got breath in this old body, while I've got a little bit of activity in my limbs, I'm going to go as much as I can go. We got to take advantage of the young people. We got to take advantage of those that are elders and our bishops. Every opportunity we get. Y'all might not remember Bishop Jones, but I remember Bishop Jones. I started this council in Virginia, West Virginia State when I was 16 years old. And one thing about I stayed close to the elders because they can teach you something. You got to learn sometimes, young people, they're not trying to destroy you. They're trying to help you be what you need to be that woman and of God and brother of God. I didn't come this tonight just to be Sister Turner. I just want to use an illustration. I'm going to ask my daughter if she don't mind to come up front. She don't like to come up in front of people. But I want to tell you, as Elisha was journeying, he had to journey. I don't know what journey you want tonight. I don't know the situation that you're going to have to go through. But in this journey, I want you to continue to follow me, man, because we're in this journey together. Somebody's praying for you. You can be free on today. You can be delivered on today. But you've got to stay on this journey. You can't get distracted now. You've been in the church too long. Your mother done prayed for you. Your father done prayed for you. Your grandmother done prayed for you. It's not time for you to give up now. I don't care who's doing what they're doing. I don't care what they're saying. I don't care what kind of way they're living. God can keep you saved. God can keep you saved when you're all by yourself. How do I know I'm all by myself? And God can keep you. He can be your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your husband. But whatever you need, God's got it. So as you journey, he journeyed also to Jericho. See, he didn't stop me. Every time he said, you can, you can stay here. It's not time for us to stay in the same place. It's time for us to keep on moving forward. Because we got to keep on going. Because I know everybody can't go where I have to go. Sometimes you got to go by yourself. And everybody ain't going to see what God has received for you. Because you can, they don't, they can't get what God has for you. I'm trying to encourage somebody. Something's been trying to make you stop. You 
get part of the way, then you find yourself right back out there. But it's time for you to be determined. It's time for you to get focused on what you need to do for God. Because payday is coming after a while, somebody. You got to hold on in there. You got to stay put. You can't let go now. You got to be about what God has you to do. I'm trying to help somebody today. Many times you want to throw in the towel on this journey. But you can't stop. If Elisha would have stopped before he crossed over Jordan, he would have received his reward. Think about it. You got to keep your eyes on the prize. You got to keep your eyes on the prize. Maybe you got your jacket. I want to show another illustration because it gets rough sometimes. I've been a widow for almost six years now, come May. And it's sometimes it's hard. And before my husband left, I didn't know I was going to have to wear this mantle. But I know a long time ago I decided to make Jesus. I decided to make Jesus. I don't know about you, but it's not about me. I decided to make Jesus my choice. And when I thought about this lesson that I was studying. I said, I want to tell this new generation, when God puts a man on you, <laughs> sweat on you, baby. Put this man on her. It was a cloak that he had, a mantle. And one thing I wanted you to God, Elijah was trying to teach him something. I'm trying to teach you young people something. Don't matter how hot it gets, you stay connected to God. I don't care how times you hurt and you shed those tears, you stay, keep that man on. Don't allow nothing to make you take that man off. Don't you take it off. You stay connected to your God. I don't care how cold they might be to you. I don't care if they don't pat you on your back. I don't care if they don't say, you're doing a good job. Keep that mantle. Stay connected. Don't you leave the church. You stay connected to God. I just want to encourage you on today. Time is winding up. I'm not a hooper and I'm not a holler. I'm just, I'm just because people is leaving their local churches. Young people is leaving the church. And I want to encourage you, you stay in the church. You stay put. And you do what God says do because the enemy's trying to kill, steal, and destroy you. He's doing everything to stop you from being what God wants you to be. He has called you for a time as this to do what God says do. You can get your double portion. You can get your deliverance. How do I know? God wants to save you. God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. But you got to get your mind on him. When you get your mind made up, ain't no devil in hell can stop you. You got to keep your eyes on the Lord. God didn't tell me this road was going to be easy. He did not tell me that it wasn't going to be rough sometimes. But I decided to make Jesus my choice. I need the Lord. You might not need him on today, but I need him every day and every hour of my life. I know God walks with me and talks with me. I know God keeps me when I cannot keep myself. One thing about God. He'll be closer than any brother. One thing about God, he'll be there to the end. You got to learn how to call on his name and let God be God in your life. When I think about those other 50, because some of you want that easy road. Some of you don't want to get out of your comfort zone. Some of you don't willing to pray at 2 o'clock in the morning. Some of you don't want to read the word at 6 o'clock in the morning. Some of you don't even want to go to Bible class at Sunday school. But I'm here to tell somebody, it takes all of that to get you where you need to be in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I decided I don't want the easy road.
road, Lord. Whatever way you want to take me through this journey, I'm willing to suffer the price. So those that suffer with Christ and those that are going to reign with Christ, so I'm going to keep on suffering some things. Because I know weeping may endure for a night, but y'all, 